Hey out there, how's it going today? I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm Cable McElderry and today I want to talk to you about what I think is one of the most important frameworks that I've kind of developed uh, as an entrepreneur and the number one thing that I really teach my entrepreneurial clients. So if you're in one of our coaching programs right now, if you've done private coaching with me or you're considering it, this is going to give you a really good basis of what to expect in coaching and how I think about my businesses. So to kind of give you a sense of where I am today as I'm filming this video, uh, I actually have four different businesses. Three of them are fitness studios um, that I never visit. In fact, one has been open for three years. I think I've actually been there on site about 12 times in three years. Uh, the last two open just in the last few months and I have actually yet to visit them uh, since the day been been open. I don't spend any time in our businesses. I really basically don't interact with clients unless they reach out to me specifically and um, I don't even actually communicate a whole lot with the teams other than the managers on a weekly basis. So if you are a fitness entrepreneur, another entrepreneur interested in building a business that is truly passive and you can be basically hands off, um, I think you're gonna enjoy this video. So in my network or my organizational structure right now, I think of myself as the regional manager. So the hands-on part of the business I do manage presently is the marketing calendar and marketing preparation as well as uh, engaging my managers to find out the key performance indicators for our various staff at different levels. And uh, this is the year for me to work to remove myself from that even. So let's talk about what I consider to be the four phases of your business. And to be clear, at any given time I feel as an entrepreneur, you have to be focused on all four of these phases, but your attention is going to greatly shift uh, from one phase to another or at different points be a different priority based on where you are in your business. So when I meet most entrepreneurs, many of them are new to business or maybe they've been struggling for business and uh, trying to get profitable and stay profitable. So for those people, about 90% of their attention, and this is most of my new coaching clients when they join a coaching program, about 90% of their attention needs to be on what I call phase one, which is lead sales and marketing. So if you're in a fitness business, particularly boutique fitness like us with personal training or boot camps, I can tell you that if you're not generating basically 100 leads per month on a pretty consistent basis, you're probably in survival mode or you're probably struggling to survive in your business. So the very most important thing is to put all of your attention and focus in what do I have to do to increase my marketing and lead generation efforts to constantly attract 100 new people or more to my business each month. Um, we teach people a number of different strategies using different mediums, both online and offline, as to how they can use low barrier offers, trials, improving sales copy, and all kinds of things to generate that uh, lead volume. Very Usually very attainable for people within 30 to 90 days. So this is the power that you have to grow your business is that using those different mediums, learn about social media marketing, consider using the deal of the day. How is your email list? Are you growing and nurturing it? Are you asking your clients typically for referrals? And do you have uh, proven methods to do that that allow you to consistently generate those leads. The second thing is is consider your sales tactics and um, I don't like manipulative sales. I love to be brutally honest with people as I'll always be brutally honest with you. Um, I love to be very honest with consumers. I want to treat people as though I would expect to be treated as a consumer. So from a sales standpoint, our sales process is about becoming the assistant buyer. Not about withholding information, but rather giving them information and helping them to emotionally understand why it is that they came looking for our service in the first place. So, but with sales, you need to understand what your ratios are in terms of if you can generate 100 leads every month, how many of those through your sales process will actually become long-term clients. And if you're presently at less than 50%, um, I can tell you that there's a lot of work that needs to be done here in terms of how you educate people or convey that information. And this is a very natural thing I find for fitness professionals. Because most of us as fitness professionals, we're very task goal oriented, we're very analytical, so we tend to explain and educate people but we, re we really don't totally understand how they need to be communicated to or how to ask questions and how, how to engage them emotionally because they think and make decisions differently typically than we do. So this is what we teach you in, in our sales courses. And I actually have a, a part of a free product actually on my website that will give you the basis of exactly how I teach people sales and how to, uh, how to use certain tools that I really believe in to be not emotional about your results and see the basic numbers. In fact, uh, type my name into Google 
Google. I really encourage you to watch my TED talk about I equals EAS. And though it was a talk that was for everybody in, in terms of how to stay motivated and inspired, it actually started it as an equation to help people understand a sales process. So 90% of your effort should be here until you're at 100 leads per month or more. Whatever you need to do, get some help with this. Hire a coach, hire a consultant, hire an ad agency, whatever it takes to get to 100 leads per month, this will be worth the investment uh, any way you can to, to get to that level and I promise you it's where the first start to grow. Um, as your lead volume goes up, many other things are going to kind of suffer and fall apart. Yes, even your service is going to suffer a little bit. You're going to get some complaints and concerns and you need to not worry about that initially too much and less more than a, roughly 5 or 6% of your clients are complaining about something. We actually just want to stay focused on generating more leads and more sales to outpace any of that because there'll be time for that later to improve the process. Remember, you deserve and it's you need to be profitable and you need to be enhancing your lifestyle financially through a successful business because the less stressed you are and happier you are living the lifestyle you want, the more people that you're going to be able to help and the more committed that you're going to be to help them. So making money is not a dirty word. You, you, you deserve to be profitable and in fact you have a responsibility to be. So when we get into phase two in operations, this is processes. Now most of us again struggle to, because we start as one man shows, we start as technicians, we really struggle to delegate and teach other people to do the way we want to do. And then when we do, at least for me, I really found my tendency was to micromanage because you want those people to do it the way that you would and you want them to do it just as well as you would. But the reality is they're not you. So this is a real test for your business in that when we start to delegate to other people, we want to give them clear processes that teach them. And this is where we teach you to write effective operations manuals and easily create uh, video tutorials and things that people will actually watch, be able to search and, and find benefit to um, in order to duplicate and do what you do. But you need to get comfortable with letting go. It needs to be safe for them to make mistakes. So if they do 70% of what you do, that needs to be enough. And if your business uh, can't function well with them working at a 70% capacity of how you would do it, it tells us that there's problems with your business model. So phase two, your, <coughs> your business, after you've generated 100 leads per month, particularly if you're starting as a one-man show, you're probably going to be run ragged, burning out. It's time to hire somebody. And in order to hire them, we have to be able to give them processes that meet our expectation and they can repeat doing what we do. The next thing is it really sucks when you hire somebody and you're paying them now, which means that that's money that you could essentially, essentially be paying yourself. We need to make sure that they deliver in a way that your clients are still going to be satisfied and stay with you, which is why phase three is staff and client performance. So within the operations processes, we're building systems that will help us measure this, or what I refer to as KPIs, or key performance indicators. Now, I've hired a lot of people over the years, and I've screwed up a lot, and with the best of intentions of improving their lives and giving them great opportunities, I realized that uh, there's been times where I was pretty vague in my expectations with them. So KPIs greatly help this, and what I come to realize is that in our small businesses, we expect a lot from our people. They have to be comfortable and capable to a lot of different things and typically handle a little bit of chaos. But what I learned is that people will perform better if they know they're measured or judged on just one thing or in some cases maybe one or two things at most. So each of my staff has a KPI for example. I'm going to share a couple of them with you. My salespeople and my managers for example are judged on the basis of the number of closes or new clients that they generate in a per month and they have a minimum target that says on the based on the fact that I'm generating 100 plus leads for you each month I expect that we actually find you know, X number of new clients per month that want to stay with us on a long-term program. Because ultimately, some of these people are going to leave. And just like you leave, every service that we use after time, it's hard to justify the value or the expense of it, and we may wish to try new things. Attrition is a part of your business, so this is why it's so important to focus in this, in this process because we have to have enough volume to outpace attrition. And we all have a very skewed perception of what attrition is because when we start our business, there's a level of excitement and uh, we make a lot of mistakes. So growth constantly, it either we're very frustrated or growth constantly feels like this. But at some point that growth curve bursts because we're not new anymore. The excitement isn't there and the real business begins. So 
my uh, salesperson, my manager, for example, their primary KPI, the number one thing they're measured on is the number of closes or new clients that they sign up per month. For example, trainers, on the other hand, their primary KPI, because we do group training, is their average attendance. So this isn't perfect, but it gives me a basis to have discussion with them about how do you compare to one another? What is the attendance of the facility? How do you rate to that? How did you do last quarter? And, th and that's the thing is it's not a pass-fail thing to judge them. It's meant to open up some talking points so you can encourage and develop them so that everybody can win, right? It's not about pass-fail punishment. It's about encouraging them to win the same way we want our clients to win. So each of the staff members in my organization would have a KPI. This is something I help people establish in their businesses. And of course, client performance is part of that. So uh, we have one specific position that is all about measuring client performance. So we're very in tune with making sure that we gather data from our clients and actually show them how they're making progress. If you're not doing this with your clients on a regular basis, you're going to have a high amount of attrition because that's how they garnish the value of your business, is how much fun they're having first off and then being able to actually see that the service has delivered some form of value. It's not on them to see the results, it's on us to show them how we've gathered information and verified that they've given results. The last pillar or phase of your business is ultimately cash flow and growth. So this being the most important thing, generating the leads, then we need to delegate some opportunities by hiring people and building processes. Now we need to make sure that everybody we can actually measure them, otherwise we're going to be constantly micromanaging and looking over people's shoulders and finding we're not making any money. Once these three things are happening and we can step back a little bit, it's time to actually look at our cash flow and see just how how profitable we are and then we begin to question can we reduce expenses somewhere can we increase our level of service without spending more hours do we need to increase the price of our services because of what it is actually costing us to provide it it's this whole perspective that will allow you to alleviate stress and give you the time to really look at this and then of course the final piece and fun part of that is to talk about growth how do we duplicate this model to open more facilities how do we grow our facility when is the right time to grow and all of those things. So this is a very, very broad perspective and overview of your business. But if you're a fitness entrepreneur looking at how do I grow, this is a really, really great kind of starting point explanation of you need to be able to look at your business from the 30,000 foot level into the general areas and then be able to streamline your focus into specific areas because you can't do all of these things at once just like our our uh, staff, you're really going to perform or function best when you can focus on just one thing at a time. So we're going to constantly shift between these four areas in an effort to improve the efficiency and operation of your business. Hopefully that gave you some value. Maybe it might left you more confused. Maybe it creates some questions. Um, not really, a, well, I guess, kind of a just a very casual pitch for the coaching services that we provide. Uh, it took me two decades really to learn and understand this to where I can open new businesses and not spend any time there. So if this kind of had raised some questions for you, I really encourage you, leave a comment, reach out to me. I'm very reciprocal. I want to help you. Uh, there's no pressure to join the coaching program, but if you see value in what it is that I'm talking about here, uh, I feel confident I could help your business. I'd love to give it a shot. So hopefully that's valuable. Thanks for tuning in and watching. I'll talk to you later.